A really fun thing to think about with square roots is how can you split up the number? And how can you work with it in other ways? So I know that the square root of 16 is 4. Because 4 times 4 is 16, but my question is can I split this up? Can I think of this instead as the square root of 4 times the square root of 4? Is that possible? Well, here's how I think about it. We start off with the square root of 16, and then I would say, oh, well, yeah, 4 times 4 is 16. So can I think of this like this, square root of 4 times the square root of 4? And then split it up like this, square root of 4 times the square root of 4. What does this equal? Well, the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of 4 is 2, and 2 times 2 is 4. So yes, that's really interesting. I can take the square root of 16, split it up like I did here into factors, take the square root of each factor, and that will give you the same answer. And this works out nicely with 16. And I'm not sure when it works out nicely again, but I am going to guess it's going to work if I take 16 times 16. What is 16 times 16? Well, let's write it out as law multiplication so I can figure it out. And I'm going to show just one more example with this idea and then talk about it in general. 6 times 6 is 36. Okay, 6 times 1 is 6, plus 3 is 9. Put a 0 here because now we have 10 times 6, which is 60. Cross this 3 out, we don't need it anymore. And then 1 times 1 is 1. So add this up, we get 6, 5, 1, 256. So the question is, what's the square root of 256? Well, it's got to be 16, but could I split it up into its factors? 16 times 16. Well, then take the square root of 16 times the square root of 16. That gives us 4 times 4, or 16. So again, instead of finding the square root of 256, we can break it down to smaller factors, find the square root of that, and that can give us the same answer. Why do this? when it seems overly complicated. Well, for the first one, it seems certainly overcomplicated. Square root of 16. Why do this whole process just to find 4? But notice with 256, that's kind of tough to find. But if you knew, if you were to break it up into smaller factors here, take the square root of each of those, you'll still get the same answer. But then you're saying, well, well, Sean, to do that, you'd have to know the square root of 256 in the first place. And that's true. But there, you're going to find many examples where this strategy allows you to access the square root in ways you didn't seem didn't seem possible at first. And and what I'm going to say in general, and I'll, I'll show some samples, is that the square root of a number, let's say a times b, right? Because a times b is going to equal that number. For example, I'm going to show an example beneath, 16 is equal to 4 times 4. It's going to be equal to the square root of a times the square root of b. And this means if you could take a number and split it up into its factors, if you take the square root of the factors, you're still going to be able to, to get the square root of the number. So for example, let's say I want to find the square root of 8. Well, I can't really find an exact value, but I can break this down. I can think of 8 as the square root of 4 times 2. I'm splitting up into two different factors. And I can take the square root of each of these, the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. And that allows me to get the square root of 2 2 times the square root of 2. Because the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of 2, we can't touch that. So we were able to rewrite the square root of 8 into this number right here. And I think I'll create some examples where we have nasty looking numbers, but by breaking it down to factors, we can find out exactly what the square root is. So this is a useful technique. We're decomposing our square root. I hope this helped.